This video contains information that might be helpful if you decide to install a slow-mo in your roundhouse Darjeeling. The slow-mo is a device that gives extra inertia and momentum to small locomotives for more realistic running. It's made up of a flywheel a power transmission train and from the output shaft a miniature chain drive which connects the slow-mo to the rear axle of the locomotive. Four clamps hold the slow-mo in place in the locomotive. There are two clamps with holes which later will engage in the front hole of the slow-mo one each side. There are two clamps with slots which will engage in these bolts Holes. later when the slow-mo is in the locomotive. These slots are used to position the slow-mo and so adjust the chain tension which is one of the most important parts of the installation. Take off any removable parts from the locomotive on the Darjeelings I, I like to take off the roof, the dummy coal, the safety valve cover and the tools. I find it easiest to work on the locomotive when it's completely upside down. Just be aware that the exhaust here which is from the dummy electrical steam turbine is higher than a line between the funnel and the cab. When the loco is upside down you need to pack up either the rear or the front of the loco above bench level otherwise you'll damage the exhaust that comes from the dummy electrical generator. We need to remove the spacer bar between the chassis frames just here Next we need to remove the two cranks from the rear axle. Just move the axle around so that the main crank is at the top slightly towards the front and give yourself the best access to the bolt. I like to hold the crank itself, not the axle. Since I removed the bolt has actually fallen off by itself. It can be quite difficult to remove these cranks from the rear axle. Don't rush this part of the job because the squares machined on the inside of the cranks are easily damaged. Now that I have the screw removed from this crank, I lever the crank off one side of the axle and then the other and alternate between the two. Make the movement small otherwise you will damage the square inside the
crank and I like to put the weight of the lever on the wheel and not on the frame. Then we repeat that on the other side. Okay, now that the cranks are off, I'll reposition the locomotive so we can take off the wheel, move the axle to one side and fit the sprocket. Now that I have the main cranks removed from both sides of the engine, I need to move the axle to one side so I can fit the sprocket. Loosen the grub screws in the wheels. Lift the crank and push the axle to one side. Just let the slow-mo sit loosely between the frames for now. I use a one and a half millimeter ball ended Allen key to push the axle. It's small enough and the round end doesn't damage the thread in the hole in the axle. We'll just nip these up lightly. It will have to be properly regaged later on. Now we have the sprocket on the rear axle and the slow-mo sitting between the frames. I'm going to fit the clamps that will hold it in place. On the front of the slow-mo there's a threaded hole that will take the forward clamp and at the back of the slow-mo there's a threaded hole that will take the rear clamp. The forward clamp has a hole in it. I find it easiest to fit the screw and then fit the clamp. On the back of the clamp there's a machined boss which will engage in the slot in the chassis. When the clamp's fitted the straight edge or the longest edge has to be vertical. This can be the trickiest part of the install sometimes. It usually helps to lift the slow mo up about one millimeter. Then, once the bolt is started in the hole, just ensure that the boss at the back is engaged in the slot in the chassis. The clamp for the back has a slot. When it's fitted the slot must be horizontal and the slot which only goes about half the width of the clamp plate must be towards the front of the loco. Again, just check that the boss on the back is engaged properly in the slot in the chassis. Then do up the bolt. These don't clamp tight to the chassis. They just hold the slow-mo in place, but it will still be free to float between the frames. Then we repeat that on the other side. To refit the cranks to the rear axle, we must line up the square that is machined on the end of the axle with the square that is machined in the crank. Using the front crank as a guide, put the rear crank at the same orientation 
then turn the axle until the square on the axle lines up with the square in the crank. Then we need to reinstall the screw. Then we repeat this process on the other side of the loco. And now we need to adjust the sprocket and the chain so let's have a look at what we're trying to achieve. The alignment of the sprocket on the back axle. We want this sprocket to be in a position so that we have a nice straight run of chain from the sprocket we're talking about here to the sprocket in the slow-mo which is up here. Example, this is too far to the right, this is too far to the left, and this is about right. The next objective is to have the chain adjusted so that as we can see here there's a very small amount of movement that looks about right. To achieve that, we'll zoom back out and I'll show you the procedure. Hold the slammer forward in the engine. Not a lot of force. We don't want that chain too tight. Then we push the clamp plate back at the same time. This action. And while we hold those in position, we do up the socket head bolt. We'll hold the slow-mo forward and push the slotted clamp plate back and do up the bolt. And that's given me a pretty good adjustment on the chain. It's a small amount of rattle and it's not too tight. I'll also now, when I'm happy with the sprocket adjustment, nip up the grub screw in the sprocket. Well I'm happy with that adjustment the way it is. So it's now time for a test run.